Okay, let's start then. Good afternoon. I was just wondering, is there good afternoon in Chinese or is it only near? Throughout the day? Always near. So, small differences, small orders. Um, just before we really start with what I wanted to do, a uh, general remark, or a couple of general remarks. I heard, and this is in a way already something relevant, uh, dealing with numbers. I heard that some of you, some of you means some from here or from the others, I don't know who, but it is worthwhile to, to mention in general, in general uh, said something, I wouldn't say complain, but said something, they have difficulties, they wouldn't know exactly what to learn here. Um, which is fine. You will learn, after a while, what you learn. You don't get this, what is called spoon feeding in English. It's this difficult process of eating with chopsticks and trying to figure it out how to do it yourself. Uh, things come together at some stage, and you, if you follow, you will remember, all right, now it makes sense, now it goes there, called jigsaw. You won't get the entire picture. Because actually getting the entire picture is something wrong. You, you get an impression of something. You take what you, your, your impression as the reality, but actually it is not the reality, but it is some form of abstraction. It may be in time. You take a photo now, you don't know what did it look like in one hour ago, and you don't know what will it look like in, in one hour. So it is development. It is as well something you see that is visible, but you don't see what is behind it, beneath. We will see after a while. So, take your time and accept something that is extremely difficult. I was thinking about it. Is it actually possible? Chaos. Is chaos possible? And I looked recently a little bit into chaos theory. They say it is possible, there is chaos. I'm convinced there is no chaos because there is some kind of order in it. But here it is, of course, difficult to detect the order. Because we just see something. We don't see a clear end, no clear beginning. And this is what we try to do in terms of learning, studying, in terms of education, trying to find the order. Which is great, isn't it? After a while you have the order, you know everything. And you have at the other end order. And I should make a reference now. I got this problem, heard this recently somewhere. And it is connected with something actually we all don't like. What she did in the presentation, she was saying, what we do in education is we start with little children from chaos. They do what they want. Children, you ask them, what's the weather like? And they say, I want to climb onto the tree. Nothing to do with each other. And order is something where we know exactly what it looks like, and we can measure it, we can put a label on it. But, as I said, we don't like to talk about, we don't like to think about it. What she said is, the highest form of order is death. That's it, finito. That's order. There's nothing happening anymore. Everything is clear. And we know even the development from death to whatever. So in a way, education is this dangerous process 
of taking all this, these potentials, these opportunities away and pushing you into some, into one direction. There's no idea from my side to kill anybody. But be aware of it, that with the order, and especially with accepting one order, you are caught in something. You don't have any options anymore. And if you are really caught in it, it's extremely difficult to get out. I was driving a car, and I have to think about it. When I learned to drive a car, I was driving on the right side of the street, of the road. And then I moved to another country, and all people did the wrong thing. They drove on the left side of the road. I was the only one who did the right thing and drove on the right side of the road. Until I figured out, actually, I should adapt to the new order and drive on the left side, because otherwise I'm in trouble. It took a while. Actually, it was not so difficult because everybody was doing it, so I joined the others instead of thinking. It was only diff difficult, somewhat difficult, if I was on my own. If there was not this guidance. So be, be aware of it. We need order. We need this clear thinking, bringing things to the point, but we have to accept as well, this is what we will be talking today quite a lot, we have to accept that whatever it is in economics is about real life, it is not predictable in the strict sense, there are some expectations from somewhere. We know why we expect, why I expect that not everybody leaves now. Why you expect me to stand here and talk two hours or 90 minutes. There is a certain order behind it, but we cannot rely on it. I could say, no, I don't want. Just read the book, I go. I'll sit in the corner and read my book. And this is a difficulty as well when it comes to learning, not only in terms of the substance, but in terms of what you are doing, what we are doing. As much I like disorder in some ways, there are some rules, some points of order. One is, I mentioned it, send emails when it's related to cause issues from your Bangor email address. Others, they disappear. I won't look at them. As simple as that. Check Blackboard. From the overall participants, meaning here and the other class, there are exactly 56 people, they are of one lecture, who checked the texts which I asked you to read. And I asked you, read them, download them individually, don't ask somebody else to get it for you. So check it. It is really very much about do you want to function in life, this is something you can learn. Technically function, drive on the right, drive on the left side, whatever is the rule. When it comes to difficulties, you have to live. You have to be able to know the basic rules, meaning to function, but as well to be flexible. And this is only possible if you live. If you know what the situation is like, and if you know how to deal with something that is unexpected. So I won't, read, won't ask who read the text, and this is part of the order. 
I know it is difficult. I assume that these texts actually are available in Chinese as well, so it could be easier. But as I said, try to read English, get used to it, and read not only the text I mentioned, but read quite a lot. Not to copy it in terms of there is a recipe and you can apply it, but to understand what we are talking about. And this is a multitude of issues which you don't find on the mobile phone, not in class and not at all, but that you find in active communication with others. Read these texts, and this part of the order is, if you read it or not, that's here. Part of the order is, we all have to go through it if we like it or don't like it. There are the exams at the end, there are tests throughout the year, and this is something you have to pass, just to function. Sorry about this, but that's the game of the, the rule of the game. As I said, we don't have to like all these rules, but we have to deal with them. Now, a little bit about what we talked so far about economics. And it is part of learning skills as well. These are some core issues. Economics is a social science in the widest sense. And I guess there are many economists who would not agree with this. There are different opinions on it, to which extent it is really a social science. We will go into detail at a later stage, or at later stages, but what you can see is, coming to the third point, Economists came from many diff different disciplines, medicine, engineering, philosophy, law. And then, after this broad approach from different angles, there was this narrowing down to a very specific, highly mathematized discipline that is called economics. There are certain limited aspects we are interested in, as economists in the, in the narrow sense, demand, supply, scarce goods, scarcity. We don't have enough, so we have to distribute the little we have. How, we do, how do we do this in the best way? That's the basic question of a narrow understanding of economics. Now the question is, of course, what is scarcity? Is scarcity, if I do not have the latest mobile phone, the latest model of the mobile phone, or is it scarcity if I have a phone and can deal with it and use the money I save when I don't pay, uh, pay for, the, for the latest model, I use for something else. So distribution. This is about behavior. This is about preferences. We're talking about preferences in economics as well, but not in terms of behavior. We talk about institutions that distribute this, but only in terms of who prints the money that's here. Who is authorized to do this and that? We don't really think about institutions in a wider sense and what these institutions do, how they guide us to deal with life. Meaning, second point, it is all about understanding the meaning, and the meaning is something that changes in history.
I don't know to which extent it is true, but before I got my first mobile phone, I just wanted a mobile phone. Just a mobile phone. Which was actually a pretty huge thing with an antenna and things like this. But I wanted one. I didn't mind whatever it is. It's not entirely true, but today I want the latest gadget that is available. Not a phone, but a mini computer with all the equipment that I don't even know how to use it. There is an institution that guides us to think in this way. The market. There is behavior that guides us to behave in this way. The being part of something. And this is a problem in a way. For us in economics, we have on the one hand from different disciplines we draw analogies. We say in biology, in medicine, in wherever, in engineering, it works like this. We will come later to Wilfredo, uh, Wilfredo Pareto. He was an engineer, and he came from engineer. When we build something, what do we do? How do we deal with the resources? If we want to build a bridge, we need this and that material, and we cannot combine this material with this material. We need a certain amount of each material. This was then what he thought in economics it made makes sense to think in economics with this model. We have different raw materials, different factors of production. How do we combine them in order to function in an optimal way? How do we avoid re uh, wasting resources? And that means always answering concrete needs and given conditions. There's this one question that came up in the paradoxes as well. Why is water so cheap? And why are diamonds so expensive? We don't need diamonds. Is there anybody who needs a diamond? Who cannot survive without one? I don't even have to ask how many people are in the room who cannot survive without water. Still, it's much cheaper. If you are in the desert and you have 20 diamonds, highest quality, and you get half a bottle of water, you will spend them all. Why? What is the mechanism? As I said, it seems to be very simple that there is only little water available, and this is what we need. It seems to be just a matter of supply and demand. But then there is a question, is it really this, or is there something about production behind it? Things we will come later to. In any case, what is important, economists deal at the end of the day even if they talk about abstract models, nice figures and graphs, talk about needs under given conditions, how to satisfy needs under given conditions. And we talk about then about conditions, who, who can work, who is able to work, what kind of qualification do we need, what raw material do we have, what is a matter of transport? And this means we are talking about interests. What do we want to produce? What do we want to do with the resources we have? And we always have different, uh, different options. Here. And you have them changing these options. If you look at what is going on in China today, you see this major shift of, from a massive growth policy by export, reorienting 
on a domestic market and supplying more goods to Chinese people. Not supplying in the strict sense, but looking for what is the consumption here. This is a matter of interest. This is a political decision. It's hugely complicated. Don't say you can, you, 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 you can just change it. Today we, we go more for export than we... There's a rationale behind it. There's a certain way of thinking behind it. And sometimes it's very straightforward. You first have to develop the industry, and then you can basically, with this stock, you can serve the domestic development. But at the same time, it is not always, or it is not so simple. And you find the discussions here in China over the last 50 years or so. Defining questions, what do we want to achieve? And looking at the contradictions and different interests in society. This is about hierarchy, different social groups. It is about age. It is about gender. It is about internal, external forces. And I don't know enough about China. I know in all countries where I lived, there had been only a very small number of women working, especially when there had been children, and especially when there had been elderly who needed care. This was the role of the housewife. It was different in according to class, meaning they all had to work because they needed the resources. They didn't have time. Then there was granny looking after the children, or something like this. This changed tremendously. We still have a lower employment rate of women, but at the same time we have a much higher rate than we have had 20 years ago. So things are in flux, things are developing, and these are based on different interests, and we have to think about it. And when I said before, it is all about answering concrete needs and under given conditions. We have to think as well about something else that determines economics and that determines how we or you as economists will approach things. And I say you because I'm kind of out of this game because I'm teaching and I'm teaching kind of everything, well not, not everything but uh, for, for me it's limited, for, I, I don't have these different options but you can say let's start on the depending on left which is the right you can say there's only one thing I want a job, business that's all I'm interested in and my life has two dimensions. A, before nine, before I start to work, and after five, after I stop work. And life is a residual category in, in this way as well, that if I am good in business, meaning if I have a good job, if I get with this good job a good income, then I can have a better life. I can buy everything and play with the mobile phones in class. Then I can go for holidays. It's amazing how, me, how many people kill themselves while they are working, over hours, working long times, working, working, working. And then they are completely exhausted. And then they spend all the money for holidays and have two weeks holidays. 
it is extremely difficult, of course, certain orders, to say, I work half-time, part-time, I work a little bit less, less stress, and then I have time really to enjoy holidays. I'm not completely stressed out and freaked out, burned out. I can enjoy holidays. I'm relaxed going there. And it's sometimes, of course, very difficult to deal with these existing orders. And sometimes it's small things. I cycled for many years every day to work, which was about one hour plus going there and one hour plus going back. It was always uphill. I don't know why, because both directions had been uphill uh, and against the wind, which was about two and a half hours to three hours, depending on the conditions, holidays per day. I never ever thought about holidays. I, I want to relax. I relaxed every day. This makes a difference. If we integrate leisure time properly in the, in the day, into the day. If we don't make leisure time to be stress, going to the gym on the way home for half an hour or one hour, paying a huge amount of money, I always was surprised when I went to, to, to some place, of, there was a gym and a swimming pool. I went to the swimming pool. People going there with a car, there was a park around it, they went there with a car and then went on these treadmills, running on the treadmill instead of going for a walk out, out of it. There is a special rationale behind it. And this is something about economics. And this is something about life. Start with life. Don't think first business and then we look for the conditions how to get into business and how to stay in business. But think at least as well about what is life about? What are the options we have? As I said, they are limited and they are even more limited if we, don't, uh, if we are not in, in power positions, whatever power position is. But with this, we organize, with this life, we organize policies. For you, being in the student union or something is life and policy. It's organizing your life and not only your personal life. It's, it's part of it as well, of course. But it is as well organizing college life. Making something out of your, the, the time you study, but as well looking at what is going on for the next generations. This is part of it. And there are different ways of policy making, of getting involved. And then you come into business in the strict and narrow sense of, OK, here I am, here I work, here I get money, and with the money, of course, that goes back to life and whatsoever. And then you have in the middle, this is what we usually see. And this is why I said, be careful with what you see. If you open the newspaper, if you look at uh, whatsoever, what you see is usually policy and politics. But this is not all. And this is possibly not the most important because, of course, policy interests or what pol politicians do is guided in different ways by what is going in life, what is needed in life. And part of it is, part of it is business. Part of it is getting jobs. A colleague, my, one of my teachers, that a colleague said something like, society is communication. Society is only communication. If there is no communication, there is no society. And wherever communication happens, we have society. It is talking, it is listening, it is looking at something. 
it is not saying anything. We talk in different, or we communicate in different ways, and we do, do not communicate in different ways. But as well, what happens in economics is about communication. I have 100 units of money, and I want to buy something, and we exchange goods and money, this is communication. Instead of using the word, we use symbols. Money is a kind of language, first and foremost. Then we talk about the rest later, if we got this into our brains. And then dear Niklas Luhmann said, society is un extremely unlikely to happen. There's always some kind of misunderstanding. There are always conflicts. There are different interests. So that society really happens in an orderly way is extremely unlikely. And still, he said, it happens. Things come together, things find a specific order, order, or they are put into a specific order, put in different ways together. And this is the way how, at the end of the day, society happens. Now, you can talk about this for 20 hours or something, if it happens, or if we make it happen, and what this happening actually means, and, and, and. But one important point is that there is always something underlying as a general interest, if you want, as a general guideline. We will come back to it later. Those who read the Engels test, uh, text already read this. Well, read it in, in, indirectly. He didn't talk about it using these terms. But it is about societal and individual production and reproduction. We produce something, and this is narrowing down economics. We produce something that we need, goods, not commodities yet, goods that we need. And this happens with three dimensions. The one is subsistence. We produce what we need with the resources we have immediately available. And in the extreme case, we produce exactly what we need. There is nobody else involved. It's my vegetarian example, being vegetarian. I produce the carrots I eat, and I only eat carrots, and that's it. I don't need anybody else to produce them. And I don't need anybody else who produces potatoes or chicken or whatsoever because I don't eat chicken anyway. But this is the next point, exchange. I have potatoes, you have chicken, I want a proper meal and you want to have a proper meal. And proper meal means I want to have a variety of food on my plate or table. So give me a little bit of your chicken, I give you a little bit of my carrots. Very simple thing. Economics is very simple. Sometimes we pretend to be complicated. Now we have a third moment. I hate carrots, I hate chicken, you hate carrots and chicken. But we produce carrots and chicken, carrots and chicken, and we produce it for the market. And with the money we gain from it, we buy fish, or a car, or water. So it's simply market production. We produce for the market, 
we will come back again as well something to this. We produce not use value, not something we use, but we produce something for the exchange on the market. We are not interested in, really interested in the fact that it is useful. It is useful and it is important that it is useful because only then somebody will buy it. But that somebody buys it, that is our interest. And that is the crucial point for economics today. Most of the production, not all, most of the production takes place within a market system to be sold on the market, to be traded on the market, to be exchanged on the market. And there you see something important. To be exchanged on the market, we have had exchange already before. Namely, when I said I have carrots, you have chicken, let's exchange them. This was ex exchange as well. So we sometimes have exchange, but in different frameworks, in different contexts, in a different understanding. Now, as I said, it is all very simple, but at the same time, it's not so simple as it sometimes seems, because before I said, I produce my carrots and that's it, it's just me. I don't need the rest of the world. And this is actually what economics does in many cases. I don't know if you, if anybody knows this book, The Life and Strange Surprising Adventures or Robinson Crusoe. Anybody who knows it? Robinson was a naughty boy and what he did actually, he left home against the will of his father. His father wanted him to be a good, a good boy and work and learn a business and Robinson said no. And he went on a ship and as things happen, this ship wrecked. And Robinson, Robinson Crusoe was the only person who survived in the middle of, I don't know, the South Sea. And there was an island. There was something that he could save from the ship. But that was it. He was standing there, having some tools he could save, having some gunpowder from, uh, he, he saved from the ship, some items. But he was just on his own. So it was this individual, without society, just trying to survive for himself. This is an interesting story for economists, and always refer to, because there you see it is possible that production takes place without society. But, I said, he had some tools, he saved some tools from the ship. And later, there was actually one of the neighboring uh, islands, there, there came cannibals to make a feast on his, his island and slaughter some of their victims there and eat him. But uh, Robinson Crusoe saved the life of this one guy, who was going to be in the pot for the next dinner, and he saved his life, and he said, your name is Friday. Because Robinson Crusoe did not have a calendar. He did not know when did this happen, this shipwrecking. He did not know which day or date it was. But still, he, didn't, he couldn't cope with this. 
He said at some stage, or perhaps he knew it, I don't know exactly the story, but he said today is Monday. And then we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You are Friday, because today I find you. Saturday, Sunday. He needed this order. He, he took this order from his old life, which was a social order. Saved it basically to his new environment and said, great, I have this social order. Being a Christian or coming from a Christian family, I think he prayed even especially on Sunday because this is what you do in Christian societies. So he was not without society, even if it seemed to be the case. He was completely detached. And poor Friday had to be brought to order. Poor Friday had to be educated to know why his name was Friday. So it is a complex process. We are, as I said, some economists say, you see, with this example, it is possible to be without society, produce without society. And Marx said, production by a solitary individual outside society, a rare event which might occur, occur when a civilized person who has already absorbed the dynamic social forces is accidentally cast into the wilderness, is just a preposterous uh, as preposterous as the development of speech without individuals who live together and talk to one another. I lived actually on an island, not as bad as Robinson, but it, it is difficult to imagine if you live a couple of weeks with, in complete isolation, what happens to you in terms of your mind, in terms of speech. I just wanted to hear somebody. I knew I wouldn't understand the language, but I wanted to hear some t somebody. Is it, am I still alive, kind of? But it was a great experience. So this is something where you see this absorbed already, dynamic social forces, the weekdays, the times, the tools you had. This was society even if there was nobody around. Writing, he wrote his diary. This was society, communication. Even if there was nobody, well, I think there was a bird or something and later Friday, he could talk to. But first he was just talking to his diary. Communication. Thus, when we speak of production, we always have in mind production at a definite stage of social development. The tools we have are not the tools they have had 100 or 1,000 years ago. We have hammers. We don't have stones to use for, for driving a nail into the wall. And we have modern machineries. Production by individuals in society. It might therefore seem that in order to speak of production at all, we must either trace the various phases in the historical process of development, or else declare from the very beginning that we are examining one particular historical period, as for instance, modern bourgeois production, which is indeed our real subject matter. So we can say we are looking at what is happening today, but we have to be aware of the fact there is something from where we come. Which means as well there is something to where we go. And we go for a break now.